Right now at five, a boy in Joplin survives a fall into an icy pond thanks to a police officer and a good Samaritan. And we've got another pretty decent start to our day, another spring-like day ahead of us. We'll take a look at that forecast in the afternoon. Come on. Plus, a family in Arma, Kansas tries to pick up the pieces after a fire destroys their home. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 5 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner. There we go. That's better, isn't it? That's, there you that's, are. That's, There's that's that voice better. we love to hear. I, uh, we had red sauce and taquitos for dinner last night, and I ate like 12 of them, which was a mistake. Okay. They're very good. <laughs> They're amazing. Then I didn't feel so well. Then I couldn't sleep. So now I'm tired and I d didn't turn the microphone on. You know, it right. happened. That, but hey, we're, uh, we're online now. We're yeah, gonna, we'll get you some peps at AC and get you over to the weather center. We, we'll, we'll make it through today and it's a great day out there. At it least is. it's going to be another nice. great day. Let's take a quick look outside. This is our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. And you can see it looks fantastic. It's a bit on the uh, cool side. But we're still actually sitting pretty mild right now. MoDOT camera 20th and range line also looking great out there. As we take a look at Skywatch Storm Tracker, we have a few high clouds here and there. Otherwise, mostly clear skies. And again, taking a look, we've got this little system through Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. And we've got some rain showers off the West Coast. That's, again, really about it. We're sitting at 41 in Joplin right now, 39 in Pittsburgh, and temperatures will fall back a little bit more as we go through the morning to ultimately get us to our lows. 37 when the kids get on the bus this morning. Sunny skies, west breeze at about 5 to 10. We hold on to the sunshine into the afternoon. Low 50s, northwest breeze 5 to 15. Could have some occasional gusts upwards of 20 miles an hour. Clear skies. All through today and into tonight, temperatures again, low to mid 50s out there. So sunny, warm, not much else to say about that. We'll talk more about how long the warm weather lasts and what the upcoming weekend is looking like here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. Oklahoma authorities make an arrest in a homicide investigation. On the evening of January 5th, the Miami, Oklahoma Police Department requested assistance from the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation concerning a possible homicide. During the investigation, the OSBI determined there was an altercation between multiple individuals near 2nd Avenue, Northeast, and H Street. That incident led to the shooting and death of this man, 27-year-old Matthew Vincent LaCostro. Based on the investigation, an arrest warrant was issued for this man, 34-year-old Travis Christian Wilbur. On Friday, Wilbur was arrested on a charge of first-degree murder. A Joplin police officer and an anonymous Good Samaritan join forces to rescue a boy from an icy pond. Reports of someone falling through the ice at Mercy Park alerted Joplin police Sunday night around 6. Authorities say a 12-year-old boy fell through the ice with his head above water. A Good Samaritan and a Joplin police officer jumped in the water to rescue the boy. METS treated the boy on site for non-life-threatening injuries. The Good Samaritan left the scene without being identified. And students at McDonald County High School yesterday gathered to learn history straight from the mouth of a Holocaust survivor. Erica Schwartz lost her entire family except her mother during the Holocaust. Counting her blessings and focusing on them was her key to happiness afterward, a key she wants to pass on to the younger generations. I wish to God I had my family, but I have used that um, as a means to remind myself every day of how blessed I am. It's open to the public at the McDonald County High School Performing Arts Center. And a young family in Armacanza lost everything in a house fire that took place last Thursday. Kaylee Ware and her fiance, Chad O'Banion, woke up early Thursday morning to smells of smoke and quickly realized that their home was on fire. Though the family all made it out safely, their house is destroyed, and they are now trying to start over. KOAM's Elise Noe spoke with the family to learn how they're overcoming this tragedy. It's honestly the last thing we expected to happen to us. Kaylee Ware and her fiancé came back to visit their Arma, Kansas home days after it had been destroyed in an early morning electrical fire. At first it was just like panic, get our kids out of the house, you know, and then it turned into... Um, <coughs> 
once I got them taken care of, I looked and it was just devastating to watch my house burn down. We brought, we brought both of our girls home in it, so it was just kind of hard to see all those memories that we built in this house just kind of burn away. Kaylee and her fiance Chad are now trying to rise up from the ashes and start anew, something they say wouldn't be possible without the support of their community. We received a lot of clothes and diapers, which was tremendously helpful because we lost all of our diapers that we had just bought. Um, and all of their clothes are pretty well gone, but we've received a lot of clothes. Um, we're still needing like household appliances, like blankets and pillows. Through tragedy, Kaylee has found a positive outlook, something she says she does for her daughters. Our children read off of us and they feed off of our energy. So I've really tried to keep a positive energy for the girls. As hard as all of this is, it was just a house. Our family is the most important thing and they're safe and we're okay. Take it as a life lesson and grow from there. The couple will be looking to tear down the house and continue to live on property. Kaylee and her family are accepting donations from those willing and able to help. For more information on how to help, you can visit our website at koamnewsnow.com. And that's a look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News. The Golden Norsemen haven't lost in nearly three months. Can they keep us up? Plus, bullfighting returned to Mexico City, but some are not happy to have the event back. And we have a nice sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. News Your Way, powered by KOAM News Now. Well, we're still in January, but baseball season is here. At least it's here this week. Pittsburgh State Baseball took to the practice field yesterday afternoon for some final tune-ups before beginning its 2024 schedule later this week. The Gorillas have two preseason All-Americans on their team, catcher Nixon Brannon and shortstop Cade Clemens. Both of them were All-Americans a year ago as well. They each have high expectations for themselves and the team this year. The Gorillas' first chance to prove what they've been working on all offseason comes on Thursday. We've been practicing some bad weather, but it looks like we have a chance to have really good weather this weekend in Oklahoma, and we get an opportunity to play four on the first weekend, so we're going to learn a lot about our baseball team this weekend. I'd like to repeat the year, get named another All-American. I want to win a gold glove. I mean, the, the list goes on, I mean, but as a team, I know I just want to win a lot of games, I want to have a lot of fun. I mean, I'm a big fun guy. Everyone loves to have fun on the baseball. Baseball's fun, so, uh, you know, just go out there and play the game. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah, I just want to come out and, you know, take it one pitch at a time and try to do my thing and continue the successes but not really worry about it too much. You won't have to wait very long to see the Gorillas in action. The 2024 baseball season begins in just two days. They play in the UCO Classic at Central Oklahoma with a game each day until Sunday, starting against Oklahoma Baptist Thursday at 11. Missouri Southern Baseball starts at the same time. The Lions begin their 2024 campaign on Thursday at 4. They play in the Dugan Invitational in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We'll hear more from the Lions before they leave later this week. Well, think back to November 4th. Chiefs are 6-2, playing in Germany the next day. Pitt State football loses its only regular season game to Missouri Western, and NEO men's basketball loses to Hutchinson Community College. Golden Norsemen haven't lost in the nearly three months since. NEO has a 15-game winning streak, trying to turn it into 16 against Murray State at home. Norse fall behind 2-0, but answer real quick. Tobias Roland pulls the trigger from three and connects. 3-2, NEO in front. Roland finds Ronyo Obu. He hits from downstream as well. 6-2, Norse. Midway through the half, shot clock winding. Caden Carter falls away and hits at the buzzer. NEO up 10-7. Next possession, Obu open from three again, and he makes the defense pay again. Norsemen start to find some breathing room. They go up top to Trayvon Bird in the alley-oop, which stretches the lead to nine. When you've won 15 in a row, sometimes the basketball gods smile on you. At the shot clock buzzer, Damani Barley hits a 30-footer. Idio 
has now won 16 consecutive games. The Golden Norsemen beat Murray State 91 to 76. Well, still to come, a new report found that hate crimes at schools are on the rise. We'll have what you need to know. Plus, we're going to take another look at that spring like forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Don't be left out in the cold this winter. Let my KOAM TV. You're watching KOAM News Now, home of Super Bowl 58. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 515. Now on this Tuesday morning, our camera on top of the Cornell Complex. We've got mostly clear skies out there. Got a little bit of a breeze and otherwise relatively decent conditions yet again. Moodle camera 20th and range line looking pretty good as well. And as we head across state lines to Kansas, once this pops up, the KDOT camera at 69 uh, in the East 520th Avenue. There it is. And as you can see, it also looks relatively fantastic as well. Skywatch Storm Tracker, nothing pretty sip wise in our immediate area just a few high clouds that's about it we got some showers snow stretching from michigan through Indi uh, indiana and illinois and getting ready to push off to the east and we have some showers off the west coast and a few entering the pacific northwest but that's it it is relatively quiet out in the area uh, across the country really and it looks great from our camera seventh and range line 41 degrees partly cloudy feels like 38 with a west breeze at about five miles an hour now keep in mind our average highs again are supposed to be the low to mid 40s and some of us are already in the low 40s now temperatures will fall back a little bit more as we go through the morning we ultimately reach our overnight lows into the upper 30s and then we'll turn around and warm back up for another beautiful day so as you can see temperatures above average our lows should be into the 20s. Nowhere near that. We're into the upper 30s out there with a few low 30s here and there. As we get our morning underway, it is going to be sunny. It is going to be a little chilly initially, and then we'll go mid 40s by late morning out there. And would you like to know what happens this afternoon? A lot more of that sunshine across the area. We are looking at sunny skies, temperatures into the mid 50s, so roughly 10, 12 degrees above where we should be for this time of year. And like I said, I was talking to uh, to Caitlin about this yesterday and to our producers. This is the first time in like three weeks that there hasn't been much to talk about in the weather department which is a nice little break. It's been kind of hectic the last few weeks around here. Well, mostly clear skies tonight, so just a few clouds out there. Temperatures will then again eventually fall back into the mid to upper 30s for our overnight lows, so we continue to stay above average. As we go through the rest of the week, another sunny day tomorrow, getting close to, if not reaching 60 degrees and perhaps a little warmer than that. We are looking at 60s on Thursday and Friday. A few more clouds on Thursday. As we head into the weekend, we'll see rain chances increasing, so unfortunately, only just in time for us to be off work. Even though the temperatures still aren't bad, we're looking at rain chances Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the best chances for those being on Saturday. They even carry into Monday. As we head later into next week, though, don't worry. Just in time to go back to work. The sunshine will return. There will be some clouds here and there, and the temperatures warm back up again as well. Take a look at Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, back into the upper 50s out there. So again, we are 15, even in some instances, 20 degrees above normal uh, over the next several days, save when we've got this rain coming in. And take a look at those overnight lows. Coldest nights are Sunday and Monday, but otherwise it is looking pretty good out there. That is a check of your forecast. We will be back with Health Watch right after this. The recipe to making a great partnership. With a crackpot. Judge Judy. Weekdays at 4 on KOAM-TV. Topping Health Watch this morning, a new report from the Justice Department found that hate crimes at schools are on the rise. The number of hate crimes at schools more than doubled from 500 in 2020 to more than 1,300 in 2022. Of all the hate crimes in the U.S. in 2022, 10% occurred at schools, making it the third most common location for them. The most common spots are on the street or in a home. According to the report, most offenses involve intimidation, vandalism, and simple assault. And they are mostly motivated by anti-black bias, followed by anti-Semitism and anti-LGBTQ bias. This is the first time the FBI and Justice Department released a report on hate crimes at schools. The educational institutions range from elementary schools to universities. And measles cases are on the rise. That's according to an alert issued Thursday by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. 
The CDC is warning health providers to be on alert following several outbreaks, largely among unvaccinated children. Health officials have tracked nearly two dozen cases of the virus since December. This comes as vaccination rates have dropped in the U.S. According to a CDC report, the country reached a record level of vaccine exemptions last school year, and the U.S. is not alone. Officials have seen similar upticks in measles cases around the world. According to the World Health Organization, in 2022, there were 9 million measles cases of measles. And a new study suggests Alzheimer's disease may be transmissible in certain very rare circumstances. If found early onset dementia symptoms in five adults, it may be connected to a now discontinued human growth hormone medical treatment they received decades ago as kids. The five adults have growth hormone deficiency as kids and receive pituitary growth hormones prepared in a specific way from cadavers. The study provides the first reported evidence of medically acquired Alzheimer's disease in living people. In these cases, the early onset dementia symptoms may be the result of the possible transmission of amyloid beta protein. That's a key component of Alzheimer's disease when it forms plaques in the brain. The findings do not suggest Alzheimer's is contagious or spread like viral or bacterial infections. The researchers are not suggesting it can be transmitted in everyday activities or modern day routine medical care. And it's a way of dealing with distressing feelings. Instead of simply satisfying hunger, emotional eating is common in the U.S. and it's linked to weight gain, even obesity over time. According to a study published by the National Institute of Health, and Mandy Gaither has ways to recognize and avoid eating your feelings away. The cravings can come when you're sad or stressed. You want something salty or maybe sweet. The food can bring comfort, but also extra calories. Emotional eating tends to be very specific. You are hungry for cookies. You are not hungry for anything that somebody would put in front of you. Psychologist Leslie Heinberg with Cleveland Clinic says when people try to eat feelings away, it's only a temporary fix. The problem is still there, but people might feel guilty or feel bad about how much they ate or what they ate. Heinberg says true hunger doesn't go away. It gets worse over time. You may feel shaky or have a grumbling stomach. If you suspect emotional eating, she says to distract yourself for 20 minutes, take a shower or go for a walk. Do any activity that won't allow you to eat. If you're still hungry at the end of that 20 minutes, then maybe, you know, identify a healthier snack. But for lots of people, what they find is if they can distract themselves, 20 minutes later, that craving has really passed. And if you do indulge, Heimberg says, enjoy it. Don't just scarf it down. Eating just a small amount of the food you desire may eliminate the craving. And she says not to beat yourself up about it. Don't try to make up for it by skipping dinner and then setting yourself to be hungry and irritable later. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Heimberg says it's helpful to have healthy snacks on hand that are easy to turn to when you do face a feeling that triggers a craving for comfort food. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we've got ourselves another gorgeous spring-like day ahead of us. Those temperatures will continue. We're also watching some rain chances. We'll have another look at your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Dentures or dental implants. We make new smiles affordable for everyone. Go ahead and smile. Right now at 5.30, Frontenac High School District received some high praises for its academic achievement. And we've got another chilly start out there, but a great spring-like day ahead of us. We'll take a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. Plus, how a local sporting goods store is gearing up for another trip to the Super Bowl for the Chiefs. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 5.28 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. And I'm Chris Warner. So it's another, it's a bit chilly out there, but it is not, not bad. bad. No, For this time of year, it is not bad at all. We've got a nice start to the day, another great spring-like day ahead of us. We'll and honestly, it. we deserve it. 
you know what we do, Chris? Oh my gosh, after the last few weeks, holy cow, we need a break and Mother Nature is delivering. Let's take a quick look outside. This is the uh, Modoc camera 20th and range line in Joplin. We're looking good and hey, some other good news. No fog to contend with this morning. There was that possibility of some patchy fog, but at least at this point on the visibility tracker, not seeing anything out there. It's looking great as we get this Tuesday underway. We do have a few high clouds here and there, but otherwise it is not bad. Nothing else on the Skywatch Storm Tracker. You've got to go into Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and starting to get into Ohio to find some kind of precipitation. And we do have some showers off the West Coast and a few entering the Pacific Northwest, but the rest of the lower 48 is clear for now and that's why we're going to stay that way for at least for a little while 41 in Joplin right now 39 in Pittsburgh so again not a bad start to the day at all considering that we're about to enter February we're sitting at uh, no we're not sitting at we will be into the upper 30s by the time the kids get on the bus this morning sunny skies west breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour and when that bus brings them back home we're looking at low 50s out there sunny skies northwest breeze 5 to 50 could see some occasional gusts upwards of 20 miles an hour but and this is again one of the most simplistic weather weeks we've had in a while at least for the next few days sunny skies clear skies through the evening Temperatures 10, 12 degrees above normal as we go back into the mid 50s again today. We will remain above average for actually quite some time and we do have some rain chances on the horizon. We'll look at all that in that full forecast here in a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. Well, it took some help from Ozark Crane to raise a 70 foot cross yesterday at the Pentecostal Life Center in Joplin. The base of the cross was built last summer and the main pole and attached hardware was made in Kentucky and trucked here. The cross, not just 70 feet tall, but 40 feet across, will be lit at night and should be visible for miles around. And the Joplin Area Chamber of Commerce opens up nominations for its 2024 Business of the Year Awards. The awards will be presented at the Chamber's annual banquet to three businesses. One business that employs 1 to 50 employees, one that employs 51 plus employees, and one not-for-profit business. For more information, including a list of requirements, head over to our website at koamnewsnow.com. And some of the brightest in the four states took part in the second annual Native American STEM Fair at Downstream Casino Pavilion yesterday. Students from around our area showed off their STEM skills, competing in areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. For students, it wasn't just about competition, it was about using their skills to benefit the community. Science is actually just one part of STEM. So science, you're going to cover things like biology, chemistry, and those sorts of things. But really, STEM covers a much larger area. And of course, you know, the T in STEM is technology. You know, uh, we have a student who brought a project uh, with uh, bug bots, or sort of like battle bots. Prizes were awarded for first, second, and third place in each division, as well as medals for overall winners. And the Frontenac School District earns the Kansas Department of Education Commissioner's Award yesterday. The award recognizes Frontenac as one of the top school districts in the state of Kansas, a distinction shared with only five other school districts across the state. This is the fifth straight year the Frontenac School District has earned the Kansas Department of Education Commissioner's Award. Because this actually goes out to all school districts, uh, public and private, that we accredit in the state of Kansas. So you're talking about 286 public school districts and about another 90 private systems. And Frontenac is the only multiple recipient of the Commissioner's Award with highest distinction, which means they are graduating students and having them go on past high school at a rate that's unheard of. And Frontenac is the only Southeast Kansas district and the largest district in the state to earn this highest honor. And the Chiefs are headed to the Super Bowl, and as a result, many fans are looking for new Chiefs gear to mark the occasion. But one store in Pittsburgh gearing up for the game says some apparel will look a bit different this year. They say official Chiefs playoff shirts and hats can only be found at big retailers such as Academy or the NFL website. Unfortunately, the NFL and Nike do no longer let the small guys carry the on-field shirts that the uh, team wears for the AC Championship or for the Super Bowl, if that matters. So it's a little challenging for us to get 
uh, enough items and the ones that people are looking for, unfortunately, they don't let us carry anymore. He says this is the first time in 40 years his store has not carried the shirts, but they are preparing others for Chief fans. And basketball fans last night showed out to Iola High School, but it wasn't your traditional game of hoops. Teams from Allen Community College, Iola First Responders, Iola Pharmacy and Friends, and the Iola School District battled it out in a tournament of donkey basketball. Officials say it's a great way to get the community out together. The tournament was sponsored by the Iola High School Student Council. So the proceeds go to Stuco, and they do a lot of great things for the school. Uh, we also have Junior Prom. They're uh, uh, made chicken and noodles out there, so everybody's eating the chicken and noodles. And I think it's just small town community. They like to come out and support the kids and, and have a good time. The tournament was sponsored by the Iola High School Student Council. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. The U.S. vows to retaliate after three American soldiers were killed in Jordan after a drone strike. Plus, how North Korea is now another security challenge for the Biden administration. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. Eighty-seven and running. Topping World Watch, the U.S. vows to retaliate after three American soldiers were killed in a Jordan after a drone strike by Iran-backed proxies. Some worry about creating a larger conflict in the already volatile region. Correspondent Connor Hansen has more from New York. The Pentagon released the names of the three U.S. soldiers killed by a drone strike at a remote base in Jordan. Sergeant William Rivers, Specialist Kennedy Sanders, and Specialist Brianna Moffitt were all from Georgia. President Biden in the Situation Room discussing possible next steps with his national security team. The U.S. is blaming an Iranian-backed militia for the strike. From the outset, we've been very clear in warning that anyone looking to take advantage of conflict in the Middle East uh, and try to expand it, don't do it. The Biden administration added that it does not want to start a war with Iran. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin back at the Pentagon after surgery, meeting with NATO's Secretary General. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces, and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. There have now been at least 165 attacks on U.S. forces in the region. Some have been quick to criticize the administration's strategy. It's pretty clear that the Biden administration's policies have resulted in a huge conflagration. I hear people talking about whether we're going to end up at war with Iran. I, I can assure you the Iranians are at war with the United States today. The problem here is that this administration has not been responding. Eventually, those that you're shooting down their missiles will find ways around your systems. A U.S. official told Fox News that enemy drone wasn't shot down because it might have been mistaken for a U.S. drone returning to base. Farmers in France hoping to put pressure on the French government over issues with the agricultural industry. They're encircling Paris with tractor barricades and drive slows, hoping to gain some assurances on the future of the industry. The farming sector has been hit hard in Europe during the Ukraine war, with Ukraine being a major producer of grain for the continent. New Prime Minister Gabriel Attal has attempted to ease tensions, producing a series of pro-agricultural measures, though protesters felt they did not satisfy their needs. The French government deploying 15,000 police officers in response to the protest. Protesters say they'll continue to put pressure on the French government to, quote, rapidly find solutions out of the crisis. And Russian figure skater Kamila Vileva has been disqualified from the 2022 Winter Olympics. The Court of Arbitration for Sport gave the disqualification on Monday, two years after the teenager tested positive for a banned heart medicine. Before she led Russia to win gold in the figure skating team event, the United States, who plays second, will now be named the Olympic champion in light of the change. Oliva will be banned from skating in any future Olympics until December 2025, just weeks before the 2026 Winter Olympics in Italy. And bullfighting returned to Mexico City on Sunday, but some groups are not happy to have the event back. Protesters gathered outside the plaza of Mexico Arena to show their distaste for the sport. 
There were about 300 people joining in chants and holding signs voicing their disapproval. In May of 2022, the human rights organization Justicia Justa filed an injunction claiming that the practice violates animal welfare and impacts individuals' rights to a healthy environment. The court ruled in favor of the organization and temporarily suspended fighting. However, in December, the suspension was revoked and the merits of the case are still being discussed. Despite some groups being against the events, the National Association of Fighting Bull Breeders in Mexico estimates that the sport is responsible for 80,000 direct jobs and 146,000 indirect jobs. And King Charles is out of the hospital. The 75-year-old monarch received treatment for a benign prostate issue at the London Clinic. He announced his surgery in advance in an effort to encourage men to have their prostates checked. Buckingham Palace announced on Monday that the king had been discharged from the hospital and that his public engagements have been rescheduled to allow time for him to recuperate. The Princess of Wales was also released on Monday. She was at the London Clinic recovering from abdominal surgery. And another security challenge for the Biden administration, this time in North Korea. Senior foreign affairs correspondent Greg Polkett has more from London. The conflicts in Ukraine and Gaza already raging. A new security challenge emerged over the weekend. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un supervising test firings of new cruise missiles designed to be launched from submarines. If it works, it would add a significant naval threat to North Korea's growing arsenal of land-based missiles. Though South Korea's military says there are signs this test might not have been a complete success. There is a possibility that the North exaggerated the flight times. The flight times are shorter than what North Korea claimed them to be. South Korean and U.S. militaries are analyzing the launches. The North has been working on developing submarine-based nuclear missiles for a long time, part of a broader effort to build a nuclear-armed navy that could counter what Kim calls growing external threats from the U.S., South Korea, and other regional allies. The most hostile state, the Republic of Korea, exists in our nearest neighborhood, and instability of the regional situation is soaring due to the U.S.-led escalation of military tensions. Meanwhile, the State Department is condemning these new tests and once again urging Kim to come back to the bargaining table. We find these kinds of activities uh, destabilizing. We find them risky. We find them incredibly dangerous. Um, and uh, again, call on the DPRK to return to diplomacy. Last week, the North tore down a huge arch in its capital, symbolizing reconciliation with the South, another sign of growing tension between those two countries. And that's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. It's the seven-day winter sale at Furniture Row. Hey, understand the threats. Protect PressFreedom.org. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 546, <clears throat> excuse me, on this Tuesday morning. Live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. We're looking pretty good. Clear skies, a bit of a chilly start, but not that bad for this time of year. Well above average as we should be in the 20s right now. And we are not, which I don't hear anybody complaining, mind you. Modoc camera, 20 the range line, also looking pretty good so far. Same from the KDOT camera on 69 just south of Pittsburgh. It's a pretty decent start to the day, and we've got another great day ahead of us. Sky Watch storm tracker is clear in our area. Closest activity is Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, and then we've got some showers off the West Coast and entering the Pacific Northwest as well, but it is otherwise quiet across the lower 48, and that's how our weather pattern will remain at least for the next few days. All right, our camera seven, the range line also looks great. Partly cloudy in Joplin, 41, feeling like 38 with that west breeze at about five miles an hour. Temperatures around the region, again, not bad. 36, the 8th center, 34, Iola, Fort Scott, 39, Pittsburgh, Parsons, Independence. A little colder in Chautauqua, 32, 33, Lamar and Carthage, as well as Monette. So again, not a bad start to the day. Chilly, but again, keep in mind, all of these readings should be into the 20s right now, and thankfully, they're not. <laughs> We get our morning started, sunny skies, 
A little bit of a chilly start, not bad by late morning, mid 40s as we head into the afternoon. Another day right around the mid 50s, so that puts us about 10, 12 degrees above where we should be for this time of year. And we could have some gusty winds out of the southeast at about, say, 20 miles an hour. So nothing too crazy, but do be aware it could be a bit breezy. Otherwise, it is another gorgeous day out there. And we've got another relatively pleasant evening in store for us as well. We'll see a few clouds here and there as we go through the late evening hours and overnight. But again, otherwise not bad. And we'll be in the mid to upper 30s once again. So again, another 10, 12 degrees above where we should be for this time of year. We go down the road and we're going to stay nice for quite some time. Now we do have some rain chances. We're going to be near 60 tomorrow. We're talking 60s Thursday and Friday. Some rain chances Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday. And that does bring our temperatures down a bit. But as you can see, they're still above normal because we should be in the low to mid 40s out there. We will not be anywhere near normal. The only normal we're going to have is we're going to have our highs overnight. And look at some of these lows. 40s, 50s out there. Coldest night is Sunday at 30. And then as we head into next week, these temperatures turn around and warm right back up again. Again, not that anyone's complaining. I don't hear anybody complaining, but we're going to return to the upper 50s, pushing near 60 as we head into the next work week. So again, this is uh, the, the quietest calmest week we've had for some time here in the four states. That's a quick check of your forecast. Looking pretty good. We'll be back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. Are you game? I am ready. The tickets and dollars. All proceeds go to the animals at Southeast Kansas Humane Society. See you before the big game Sunday, February 11th. Teachers are known for giving so much energy, time, and even their own money for their students. But three teachers in North Texas gave something even more, the gift of life. Nicole Nielsen spoke to those educators. These three teachers have never met, but they have more in common than just their professions. This is the first time that all of you guys have met. I mean, right. which is funny considering you have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> we were all on the same floor. Over a three day span, three teachers saved three lives, donating three kidneys. Everyone was very excited to be a part of what was you know, what is three amazing gifts? It's rare enough to have living donors. Since 1988, Texas Health in Fort Worth has only facilitated 171 of these surgeries. So to have three teachers give three kidneys over the same three days. Was reminded of the calling that teachers have to give every day. And we all know it's not an easy job. And so it was really exciting to see that they continue to give beyond what they do uh, in their daily uh, missions. Staff says is living proof of just how generous our North Texas teachers really are. It, it was a no brainer for me. I was just like, why wouldn't I do that? I could see God's hand in all of this from the time that I decided to do it till the dates lining up to a recipient being found. Folks need to consider how easy this really is and how life saving it is. Even during our interview, all of them remaining humble and gracious. They all decided to donate for different reasons. But at the core of it all, each donation was the same. It's probably not a surprise that if it's going to be three, same occupation, uh, what do you think that occupation would be? And I think no doubt it would be teachers. In Fort Worth, Nicole Nielsen, CBS News, Texas. According to the National Kidney Registry, over 100,000 people are in need of a kidney transplant. We'll be right back. What do you do? No reward. fentanyl. Visit onepillkill.org to learn more. A creature at a ski resort forgets its ski lift pass, but ambles around some skiers for a nice close up view. This moose comes out for a look around at the Steamboat Ski Resort near Denver Saturday, willing to give a nice social media snap, but reminding skiers not too close now. Skier Chris Shamal says that the mom seemed protective of her baby nearby. The skiers were willing to keep their distance. Steamboat Ski Resort says moose and other wildlife visits are common and ski patrols close off or detour ski trails when too much moose activity is around. And time to wrap your favorite meat, cheese or chocolate in flaky buttery goodness. Today is National Croissant Day. Of course, you can always enjoy this French pastry on its own too. Officially celebrated every year on January 30th, the croissant-shaped bread appears to date back to the 13th century. 
The version we eat today is credited to Australian military officer August Zhang, who opened a bakery in Paris back in 1839. The key to making the perfect modern croissant is laminating the dough. You do that by folding butter in the mixture, which creates multiple thin layers of butter and dough. But who are we kidding? You're going to pop open a tube of pre-made croissants and throw them in the oven, and that's fine too. You can also annoy all your friends by referring to them using the proper French pronunciation, croissant. I will not annoy anybody with that because I annoy enough people as it is simply by speaking. Our director, James, uh, was talking about how I was confusing him, and I just reminded him, I said, James, I said, anytime I speak, I cause confusion. And he agreed. It's, it's, a, it's a factual statement, or as the kids these days say, facts. You're welcome. All right, let's move on with this forecast because I, I, I'm learning all these fun new phrases. And uh, it's going to be pretty nice. Sunny skies out there, mid-40s by late morning, so a chilly start, but otherwise not bad. Another spring-like day, 10, 12 degrees above normal as we go into the mid-50s yet again out there under these sunny skies. Could have some gusty winds pushing about 20 miles an hour out of the southeast, but nothing too crazy. As we head through the evening, mostly clear skies looking pretty good again and above average. Keep in mind we should be in the low to mid 40s for our highs and we should have lows in the 20s and we are nowhere near that again tonight as we go mid upper 30s across the area looking down the road it's going to stay above average for the next while let's just say that sunny skies tomorrow pushing 60s 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 rain friday saturday sunday monday and that does cool us back a little bit but still keeps us above normal and then as we head into the second part of next week a few more clouds here and there temperatures back into the mid to upper 50s let's check your forecast we're back with more right after this don't drink and drive